and record. Let me hit record. It started getting dark without any notice. Like one night it was still light out at 8.30 and then all of a sudden it wasn't. I'm like, what the heck? And, and it's been cold here today, which it hasn't been lately. This is like the first cold snap we've had. So the kids were like all slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> they move in slow motion and they cuddle up with their blankets. It's like this big surprise because it got cold. But anyways, let's get started with the project today. A couple announcements before I do get started. We have two art ventures set up for next year already. January we have the one in Anaheim, California and that one's almost sold out. We have a few spots left. And there's still time to set up um, a payment plan, I believe. So make sure you go on uh, Prima's Facebook page and check all that information out. Also, we have a new one in Canada. Let me make sure I get the info um, correct. I don't want to mess this up since I'm teaching there. <laughs> Cornwall. We're going to be in Cornwall. And it's going to be Cornwall, Ontario, April 11th through the 13th. And there's only 80 spots for this event. The cost for the event includes um, your room and food for the entire weekend. The room is double occupancy, so you will have to find a roomie or we'll set you up with one. But make sure you check the information out. There is a flyer up on Prima's Facebook page with all the information. And it's going to be Carrie, Lamour, and I. We're going to be teaching uh, two classes a piece that weekend. You guys are going to have so much fun. New product from CHA. We are going to have a blast. But again, that is... Um, limited to 80 people so make sure that you guys go and check that out uh, we already have people signing up and Prima just put the announcement on Facebook today so make sure you put you go and check that out and then Frank's show next Tuesday he's gonna be making some friendship tags using the Optimus line so make sure to check him out next Tuesday at his regular time I believe 11 11 30 11 a.m. so today tonight we are going to create this uh, wonderful canvas okay it's on a 16 inch stretch canvas nothing real fancy you can get these at your art supply store um, I usually can't find them at Michaels but you may look out in your area that or any other art supplies Dick's Dick Blicks or Aaron Brothers sometimes carries around canvases so check them them out and I'm gonna go ahead and point the camera back down so you guys can actually see the project Okay. We're going to be using a lot of pieces today just to kind of layer. We're going to add layers. We're going to add texture. I'm going to show you how to use, um, create texture without adding a lot of dimension using paints and things like that. So let's go ahead and get started. And again, we're going to go start with our little fresh canvas. Beautiful, Miss, beautiful, Miss, right? And this is uh, Frederick's. It's by Frederick's, the canvas. But you can find any old round. It doesn't even have to be primed. You can find a non-primed canvas. And let me go over some of the supplies we're going to use. We have these beautiful, I love these ones. They have the little gems in the center. This item number is uh, 561970. And the, the Aria B is what the flowers are called. We'll be using those. We're going to be using the Crystal Palace Pink Sugar. And the item number on that is 551827. We're going to be using one of the vines in here. These are way back in the day, Prima. These are like the starters. These are the first, like some of the first flowers they came out with. Uh, this one, 141622. These are cute little bits to add here and there to fill in spots. Okay. And these are Symphony Blend um, Amoroso Pink. I don't know if I'm saying that right. 537852. And this is a really nice collection. There's a nice variety. They're fabric flower. There's uh, two for six flowers in this one set. We're going to try to use them all. On this piece love those we're going to be using the um, everyday vintage IOD cardstock um, the note card sets this one is the chalkboard looking set we're gonna use the uh, one of those 
And then we have the junkyard findings. You can see those in the item number. Oh, the item number on the cards is 813420. And we have the junkyard findings 891794. All right. And if you have any other little bits and pieces, this would be a great project to kind of um, use. Now the paper, let me find that paper item number for you. I want to make sure you guys have that item number. Again, you could use any one, but I want to give you guys that information. Okay. And I'm sorry, for some reason, the internet connection I have, it breaks up sometimes, so if it looks pixelated. I've noticed it doesn't come out that way with the recording, which is a good thing. Okay, so the item number on the paper is 842659 Sparkling Spring Pink Pink Apron. So that is the paper that I used, okay? Just wanted to make sure you guys had it. And Carrie says she has the complete list of supplies on the Prima blog today. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with just a regular, um, your piece of Prima paper. Again, I'm substituting um, the piece that we just gave you with this one. This, you could see they're very similar, just a little different color. Okay, I prefer to use that, but this will do for now. And I'm just going to fold this in half. Now you guys can sketch a heart. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're co covering it up. We just want to give it the background a little um, dimension. And I wanted to make sure I give it some come, something to stand out. Okay. So go ahead and cut a larger size heart out of your pattern paper. And I fold it in half and we're doing a little kindergarten trick. Make sure your paper is even when you're cutting it. Maybe I need to go back to kindergarten, huh? All right. And again, it does not have to be perfect because we're covering a lot of it up. So we have our little heart. So pretty. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and adhere this down. I'm going to use fabric tack. And then we'll get started with um, our paints over the top. Okay. Now, let's go ahead. Kind of center. You want it centered. If it's not on here, I apologize. And the good thing about a circle, okay, if you're working on a circle, it doesn't have to be um, straight. <laughs> the project doesn't have to be straight because you could always turn the circle and it'll fix itself. Unlike a square where it kind of, if you are wanting it all symmetrical and lined up, you have to be a little more careful. All right, so now what we are going to do is we're going to add a little paint to our background. And what I'm using is just uh, Liquitex Basic Acrylics. For most of my uh, craft projects or mixed media projects like this, unless I'm getting into the fine arts, I usually use uh, the Liquitex Basic Paints. They're a good quality paint, but I'm not spending a lot of money um, using them. I do find that they're better than, say, the Artist Loft brand. But um, even if you have those, those will work. Your Apple, your... Uh, or the Apple Barrel, I think it is, or any of your craft paints will work as well. But if you are getting into more of the mixed media, you want the uh, quality a little higher than your basic craft paint, I would go to the Liquitex Basics, okay? So we're going to start out with our lighter pink. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a couple little blobs of paint around my canvas. Oop, don't drop it in the paint. As you can tell, it's one of my favorites, and when I teach classes, it's one of their favorites, too. I'm taking a sea sponge. It's a natural sponge. It has a little more texture to it than 
your basic sponges do. Okay, so I have I have this one and then I have this one. I prefer this because it does add a little more texture and um, just a little different look to it. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your light pink paint and you're just gonna dab that all the way around. It doesn't have to be solid. We kind of want that broken look. You can go over a little paper. I may have to add a little more paint, but easier just to dab it out right onto the canvas. Go all the way around. And I put the paper down first so that I wasn't wasting all of that space um, with paint, you know? So you just keep dabbing. Dab a dab a dab. And I apologize if I'm pixelated while I do this. It doesn't like that for some reason. Okay, almost done. And then we're gonna hit this with a heat gun to dry our paint. A couple little rough spots. If you have like a um, collection of paint in certain spots, that's fine. You can leave it, just adds a little more texture. So you give it that marbled look. Marvelous, marvelous, yeah. And your paper might warp a little bit, but that's fine. Now with your sponges, I would just, you don't have to rinse them out, just drop them into a bucket of water, your paint bucket. Um, just drop it in there so that the paint um, doesn't harden on your sponge. And then you can go ahead and wash those off later on. Now I'm gonna take my heat gun and heat this up real, or heat it, dry it real quick. And this will dry pretty quickly. Um, it doesn't take a lot. We're putting a pretty thin coat of paint on here. Some of your more saturated areas, you may have to dry a little bit longer. Okay. pretty good. For the most part, we're dry. We're going to add another layer of um, art mediums. And I'm going to use my fiber paste, which is one of my favorites. Okay. This is by Golden. And what it is, it's a dimensional paste that has a fiber texture in it. Okay. So it's, it's a gel medium with a more... Um, it's used as a ground to add uh, tooth or texture to your base when you're starting a project, but a lot of mixed media artists use this to add layers, and that's what we're going to do to tonight. Now with this, you can use a palette knife or you can use like an old gift card, whichever you have handy. Um, when I teach classes, which I do have a class coming up in October for you Southern California peeps, we're gonna be I'm gonna be teaching a class at Prima's warehouse and we're gonna do one of my bloom girls so hope to see some of you up there I know some of you have already signed up we're gonna have a really good day I'm gonna have um, a couple little giveaways and I have a full-on Prima embellishment bar that I bring a bunch of different embellishments you guys can choose from and if you guys have no art um, or drawing background don't worry this is a beginner to advanced class seriously I've had um, teens take my class and they've had a really good time with it so hope to see some of you up there so what I'm doing is I'm taking the uh, fiber paste and I'm just kind of going over our heart like I said we're not gonna see a lot of it it'll be peeking in and out get um, here and there and I'm going over the edges to kind of Seal the edges a little bit. It won't completely, but it'll hold those edges down a little bit more. Okay, so we've got gone over that. 
You don't want it real heavy unless you have a lot of time to let it dry. You just give it a light coating and that'll add a little bit of grip for our next layer, okay? <laughs> the sharp end of a pencil. Oh no, come on. I give you guys templates so that you guys can trace, honestly. Um, I show you techniques on how to draw, but I give you templates that you could take back with you and practice with because honestly, it's not something you can learn overnight. It is something that will take you quite a while to, to perfect. And I give you the tools that you'll need to go home and um, further that. So believe me, it is basic a basic class. But we have a lot of fun. And the project we're doing is this size. So you get a nice, decent sized canvas, finished canvas that you can take home. Plus we're gonna be doing a lot of mixed media back um, background techniques. Okay, back to this. So. I'm going to hit this with a heat gun again. It needs to dry before we add our next layer. Now the fiber paste will take a little bit longer. We want to make sure at least have a, it has a crust, a dried crust on top. It may not have to be, it doesn't have to be all the way completely um, cured, but I want to make sure at least the top is dry. So you take this, keep going around. Now another way you could have put the heart down if you didn't want to use fabric tack is you could also have mod podged it on or you could have used gel medium. Gel medium I suggested um, a matte finish. With the matte finish you're able to do um, the when you put another art medium over the top of it it looks a little more natural. If you try to put an art medium on top of the glossy gel medium it ends up fighting each other and your um, layers kind of look funny and sometimes your paint if you have a matte paint and you put it on a glossy gel medium later on it'll crack so that's just something to think about okay this is pretty dry like I said we put a pretty um, light coat on this so there's not a lot um, of moisture there all right Next, what we're going to do is we're going to mask this off. And what we're going to do is make kind of sun rays. And what I do is I go right across kind of the center. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're making a little pizza. Okay. So I cross those in half. I'm using just regular um, painter's tape, masking tape. My little lines are a little off, but that's okay. Because a lot of the center is going to be covered with our flowers and embellishments. I'm going to do one more, like so. All right. Okay, so push down your paint or your tape. Make sure it's nice and secure. Like so. All right. Some of it might lift, but we're going to use a sponge, so it's not going to be too bad. And we're going to go with our darker pink. This pink, the first pink I used was light portrait pink. And this one's primary red, but I don't see primary red in this. I see bright pink, okay? Fuchsia pink is what I see when I use this. Okay. So what I'm going to do again is I'm just going to add a little bit of paint in every other piece. So pink, not pink, not pink, not pink, not, okay? So just a little bit in each little quadrant. And we're gonna paint, use our little sponge again. Make sure you um, your sponge is wet, but you want it wrung out. So you don't want a lot of moisture, you want it damp, but not a lot of moisture in it. Because what will happen is the paint will turn runny and make a mess, okay? 
All right, so I have my sponge and I'm just going to pull this paint out from my little pile. You're just going to dab right on top of our tape. If it goes under the line on um, the paint line, that's fine because what we're going to do is we, is this the same color? It is the same color. It looks very bright to me compared to the last time I used it, you guys. We'll soften it up if it does. Okay. So you just continue all the way around our little wheel. And again, if it goes under the tape, that's fine because we're going to go back in with a little white acrylic pin and camouflage those. You can pull some of this paint off too if you want to. And with the damp sponge, what that will do is the moisture, just the, the right amount of moisture will be in the sponge. It will help you spread that paint out. Um, and it's not, it's kind of blocking the absorption of your sponge. If it was completely dry, what would happen is the sponge would absorb a lot of your paint. Instead of spreading it out, it would absorb it. And you'd waste a lot of paint that way. Okay, one more. The last one I had five little um, rays. I changed it up a little bit. No big deal. Okay, I made it a little easier this time to follow. Um, instead of trying, you can make more. You could cross hatch these any way you like. You can make small ones to bigger ones. You can mess with the dimensions. Um, it's all whatever you want to you want to do. I just did it this way to kind of ease the process a little bit. All right, so we have our next la layer of paint, and I'm going to heat that up real quick before I remove the tape. It doesn't have to be a lot. Ugh. some of this off if I can. It's kind of bright. It'll tone down a little bit once it's dry, but we're going to add more layers on top of it, so we're good. Alrighty. And this is pink, I promise. It looks kind of orangey in here. Yeah, it does look like a pizza right now, huh? That's okay. It won't when we're done. So we're gonna remove our little tapes. Again, they don't mac they don't meet up in the middle, but the center is gonna be um, covered with other pieces. Alrighty. I have paint on my hands. And if you want it um, more broken up, you could add more pieces in the center. Now we're going to take some of our, our screens, our masks, to add some more goodies. Okay, the first one I'm going to use is this one. And this is the, um, oh, what is it called? Where the, what, the punch, where they, it's the negative of sequins, and I can't remember what it's called. But the item number on this one is 960506. This is one of Anna's screens. Okay, and what we're going to use is we're going to go ahead and use um, our chalky. And I'm going to use the lighter pink, uh, old rose. And I have my, lost my cap. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to add a few um, spots over 
our other pieces that we've already put, or our layers that we already put down. You don't have to have any rhyme or reason, just we want to color and add a little more um, to it. Okay, take a little spot down here, same thing. Tap, 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 tap. Alrighty, I'm going to add a couple little spots here. And this lid has been missing for about a week or two, so, and it's still wet. So that's kind of nice to know that there's that much chalk ink in um, the stamp pad, the ink pad, that it won't dry out. Okay, so we have our little spots with that mask. And I'm going to add a little darker, oops, contrasting color with the same, gosh darn it, with the same um, mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of line it up. And I want to go over just a couple little spots where I was with the darker one. And I do this because it helps kind of blend the two colors that we use together. Adds a little bit of a variegated or, um, yeah, variegated look. And we do that when we have dark to light in the same area. Okay, I think that's good. All right. So we have this awesome piece, this awesome one done. Now I'm going to, let me see real quick, you guys. Yes, nice control. All right, instead of spraying, you could spray. Um, let me show you, actually, you could use, I'm going to use this one. I don't have the item number on this one real, um, with me, on me. But I can find it for you. I'm going to add, let's see, I think this coral or pink. Let's do cherry. Just to add a different layer to it, okay? This is Heidi Swap's Color Shine in Cherry. I'm just going to shake it up. It's kind of an orangey pink color, and that'll kind of give a nice um, different tone, pinky tone to the piece. I'm just kind of spritzing it. Doesn't need a lot. I'm going to add a little bit of this um, coral to the top. Kind of tone it down a little bit, peachy color. Lift that up. And we're gonna hit that with the heat gun. Just another little layer. Okay, so for people um, just joining us, I'll give you a little quick review. What we did was we cut a 12 by 12 piece of paper out um, in the shape of a heart and we put that down. And then we sponged our lighter color pink to the background. And then we went ahead and taped it off. And you could tape it off any way you want. I just did four pieces on this one. Or four. You could do, I did five on this. You could, you know, cut it up any way you want um, with the masking tape. And then we sponged our darker pink on top. Or wait, I take that back. Rewind. We put uh, paper, um, sorry, fiber paste over the top across the canvas here and there. And then we went and taped it off and added our paint, okay? And then once our paint was dried, which we did with the heat gun, we went ahead and added a few stencil pieces with our chalk inks and some sprays. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to add 
one last um, mask, or first actually, let me take that back. What we're going to do is we're going to take our paint pen. And you can use any uh, white acrylic pen. This one is by Montana Cans. And it's just like a, uh, it's a painter's pen. So I'm just going to go right across. Make sure you're, you have plenty of white in here. You can go right across. It's going to blend some of your chalk inks, but that's okay. And we're just going to kind of highlight our little pizza slices. This one's running out, so I gotta feed it the paint. And you probably, some of you are wondering why the centers there's missing in here. Um, we're gonna be covering that up, so it's not a big deal. Some of my fiber paste wasn't dry all the way, but it lifted on me as I ran my pin over the top. back over this one a little bit all right so we have our little pieces accented this is where we're at so far psychedelic looking on it all right so next what we are going to do now is we're going to take our little butterfly mask this one right here this one is also Anna's mask and the item number on that one is nine six zero four five two this is the mask and we're just going to add a little, few little butterflies here and there with it. I'm going to grab a makeup sponge to do this one. I don't want the paint to be very thick. Grab my sponge. Oi, oi, oi. Sorry, I'm short and they're hiding. I use the cheapy makeup sponges you can get at the Dollar Tree or 99 cent store. Um, they don't have to be anything expensive. And go ahead and grab some some of the acrylic paint. I'm going to use the silks to give it a little shimmer. These silks, um, acrylic glaze in black ice. I store them upside down, okay, like this. So that way when I want to use a little bit of it, I have enough in my lid that I can uh, use. So we're just going to take one of our little paint sponges, or our makeup sponges, lightly dab. You're going to want to dab off some of the excess. You don't want it really heavy with paint because what will happen is you'll get paint underneath the screen. So you're just going to go right over our little screen and dab. You'd rather add more later than start out with a whole bunch. Okay. We're just gonna pick little butterflies at random. Nothing. You could this. The nice part about this one is you can take and twist and turn and select individual butterflies. You don't have to use the entire um, sheet. Okay. This one we'll do a couple little the smaller ones. Let's see. We'll do this little guy right here. We don't really need any in the center because, again, we're going to be covering that up. Let's do one up here. Add a little bit more paint. Okay, I'm going to move my screen so I can add some at the bottom. Move this up a little. really like this big one we're going to go for that one and we just want it to look like they're cascading up the canvas this little guy and there's a couple different types like look the butterflies look you know, some look have really um, cut out or detailed wings. Some are just rounded. 
kind of going for more of the just rounded ones. Picking and choosing. Okay. One more. You can add as many as you like. We're going to go ahead and stop on this one. All right, so we have our few little butterflies. Put that mask aside. And again, this is uh, black ice in the silks acrylic paints. All right, so just real quick, let's hit it one more time with the heat gun before we try touching it and adding our um, embellishments. And then we'll start layering our embellishments to the center. grab a drink of water. So now we're going to start layering. And what I did was I took some of the packaging um, from the product that we're going to be using to build some layers. So we're going to pull some of our flowers and we're going to cut the uh, product packaging off of a couple of these. Alrighty. So that and we need to pull one of our cards. So I'm going to use this. And that's a good thing about Prima's packaging is the product, the packaging is very useful you can reuse it now i had i found another package the same but i guess i did not so what i'm going to do is get my scissors and i'm just going to cut maybe two inches down not even that about an inch inch and a half i'm going to use this side too doesn't matter We'll use the flip side because it has no writing on it. Alrighty. So we have those two little pieces. And then we need one of our little note cards. And I used a plain one to have the frame. This one. So that we could write our little hello in the center. And before we put it down, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to write the hello. I'm going to use the same white acrylic pen that I used. And we're just going to write this out. Like so. And there's faint lines on here, so that's kind of nice too. I don't have to worry about drawing in a straight line. And like that. All right. You could also use alphabets if you don't want to handwrite it. You could use some of Primo's white alphabets and put something on there as well. There's other cards in here. Let me show you the other cards that come in the set. There's this one. It says picture this. And then there's this nice rectangular one with uh, the line journaling lines. And a little hello. And the finger. Give you the finger. <laughs> and then here's another little list one. And another little these are perfect for uh those project life projects if you guys do project life that gives it a little more vintage feel and then here's the last one with a nice little um title bar up top okay so those are the cards that come in the set and the set comes with 16 pieces so you have plenty of um cards to choose or to use Okay, so we have our little hope 
And I'm going to be using some major um, foam squares on this one. I think four layers, that's kind of a record for me. And we're going to center. This is going to be our center. Right about there. The original wasn't really centered very well. It was kind of a little low. So we're going to fix that in this one. So put that one down first. My stuff's a little wet. My chalk ink or something's still a little wet, so i got to be careful. I think it's my paint. So these two little tabs are going flat. And all I did, the only reason why I added these was just to add something behind our piece up top. You know what? I'm going to pop this one up. Let's grab them squares. We're going to pop this one up. The first one will be flat, and then the second one will be popped. Just one little layer. I think my Ot White is going to have to go. The last couple of times I've done Live with Prima, I've had a migraine afterwards, and I think it's my light. It's not a green with me anymore, you guys. Okay. All right, so there is our little first layer like so. And now we're going to do some major buildage, okay? Major. We're going to layer four high on this card. And the reason why I did that was so I could tuck some flowers underneath and make this really dimensional since it is a home decor piece. I want it to um, really pop and... I want it really to show off. Okay. Alrighty. Layer upon layer upon layer. I think this is why I retired to major mainly paint, you guys. Couldn't handle this. Couldn't handle these confetti white things everywhere. Stuck to everything. You walk into the store with these stuck to your arm. Oy. I feel like the... It's everywhere. It's almost as bad as glitter. Eh. Okay, let's just do three. I think we're good with three. Yep. I call uncle at three layers of foam squares. I'm a quitter. You can call me that. All right, so we're going to put that down like so. Now I have, you can get this thicker tape, you can get the thicker foam tape, like I think they have it like half inch or quarter inch. I'd look for those if you want to do a lot of dimensional, or you have to peel a lot, peel and stick a lot of those. So we have our main um, center, our focal piece down. Now we're going to go ahead and um, surround it with our wonderful flowers. All right. So when I once I get my focal piece down, which is usually your, which should be your photo on a layout, or you have your focal point down on whatever project you're working on, I usually go to the next largest piece, which would be this nice, really pretty uh, pink flower. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and kind of lay out everything before I glue. That's kind of how I do it. Now this guy right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off. There's two large layers of flowers. I'm going to peel those off, all right? And we're going to use this as a secondary flower, like so. This guy is getting cut in half. I know, the horror! Jamie's cutting flowers. And these are going to frame out our little hope sign, like so. All righty. Gonna grab our little pink 
Jim um, Vine. Now, you know what would have been really cute? And I don't know if you guys are talking about this. Is you could have put a, a piece of ribbon or pink trim behind this um, and draped it like the breast cancer ribbon. Okay. So I'm going to spread this out. I, the What it's going to do is it's going to peek out from a behind our large flower. Go ahead and cut the uh, curly cute end off of the stem. Make sure you have your Tim Holtz scissors handy for this one so you don't ruin your good ones. Or a pair of nibs like that. So we're going to go ahead and um, place that down there. We have our little flowers. Let's see how we got this going. Kind of tuck them around. And you can completely cover this um, if you have more flowers that you want to use. Go ahead and just go crazy with them. I'm kind of pulling some of these stars and stuff out so they show up a little better. Okay. Like so. Let's see. This guy is going down. It's going down. We're going to tuck that one under a little. And this one like so. I got something in my eyeball. I'm missing one. Am I missing one? I think I am, you guys. That and that and that and that. I'm losing it. I think a flower ran away from me. One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess not. Okay, we'll go with it. We're going with it. Alrighty, so we have our pieces, and now I'm going to go around and adhere everything, place everything down. Okay? You don't need a lot of adhesive, just enough. fabric -Tac's very strong. Um, sometimes uh, the hot glue will become brittle and your pieces can fall off later on. This has more of a, a chemical binding to it, so you won't have that issue. Let's go ahead and glue our little stem and our flower at the same time. Like so. Ain't that awesome? Now make sure, girls, you guys all do your um, breast cancer checks. And those of you that need to, better go get a mammogram. Take care of yourselves. I know all of us are moms and busy and work and hus or wives and, you know, sisters. We all have other people we worry about and we forget about ourselves and we can't do that because... Honestly, we're not much good to everybody if we're sick and not healthy, all right? And I'm guilty as, of that as much as the rest of you. So make sure you guys do your yearly, do your weekly, get it taken care of, and keep track of it all. Ah! We have metal flying. We got heavy metal. Heavy metal. All right. So these are going to be in the next pieces that I uh, use. I'm just going to kind of place these here and there. Again, with the fabric tack, it's going to hold our little metal pieces in place. I don't want to glue on top of the petal. Kind of put that there. Lift my little star up. Now, if you have gems, you can add gems to the centers of these little guys. What I did was I let the adhesive bubble through and it kind of looks like a clear crystal. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's put this one over here. 
and this and this one over here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Too much. Mm -hmm. You can place them wherever you want. Like so. Okay. See how easy peasy this is? And how, if you've made it for somebody, how much they would appreciate it. And it shows that you thought of them. And if you are, if you have somebody in your life going through this right now, this would really be an uplifting gift to give and create for them. And again, you don't have to make it to um, pink. You don't have to make it pink. You can make this any color. Okay, let's see. We'll put that one down there. Alrighty. So we have the, the majority of this down. These are metals. They're finished. Um, here's one I didn't put down. This one, they're silver, but they're finished with a white um, cream finish. Nice shabby chic, sheep, chic, blah, shabby chic finish to them. Okay. But you can paint over the top of these. You can use our um, chalk paints on top of them and um, change them whatever you'd like. Now I'm going to just add this, these nice little uh, tidbits here and there. I like these little oldie book goodies. Now if you've ever been up to the Prima Warehouse, you'd find um, a lot of this type of flower. The um, older stuff that you can no longer get in stores. Um, we all love the new stuff, but there's always room for the old basics as well. And I'm just going to tuck these in here and there. Adds another little pop of color. Kind of fills in those empty spaces. Okay. Let's see. Do, 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 do. I can go all day with these little flowers. But we're just going to put a couple more down. And let's see. Right here. All right. And that is that, you guys. And what I would do to finish the side, if you can, if you have a ribbon, you could put a nice ribbon on here, but I would probably just take black gesso or black acrylic paint and paint the edge. That's base, uh, that's the kind of standard for um, an art piece is to paint the edge with a paint. Okay. So that is our canvas, our breast cancer awareness canvas. Here's the first one. And then here's the second one. All right. Okay. Does anybody have any questions before I go ahead and uh, leave you guys for the evening? The warehouse is in Chino, California. I don't have the address. Carrie might be able to find it. Thank you, ladies. Everybody. I don't know if we have gents here tonight, but thank you guys for coming. Yes, and that's an, um, the black gesso. It gives it a nice clean finish because you could see some of my paint on the side um, overhangs. You just get a nice uh, black gesso. It gives it a nice finished look and gives it a nice complete look. Now, if you go to some of your um, frame shops, they may have what's called a, uh, what is it called? It's a black tape that's meant for the sides of canvases, but I don't even mess with it. Just go get your gesso or acrylic paint and give it a nice finished edge. Yes, please. If you guys make this project, we'd love to see them on Prima's Facebook page, on Live with Prima's Facebook page. 
wherever you guys um, create Instagram. If you guys are on Instagram, make sure you guys um, follow Prima if you don't already. And you, whenever you guys use Prima products on your Prima products on your projects, make sure you hashtag. And so we could definitely see how you guys are using the product, and we want to see all of your beautiful things that you create. All right. So another little uh, quick reminder: we have two art ventures going on this year, this coming year in 2014, and I am very um, humbled and very appreciative. I get to teach at both. And I have some exciting stuff coming up this year that you guys aren't going to want to miss. And I will be using it at both art ventures. So January 8th and 9th is the art venture in, our, in Anaheim right before CHA. That is almost filled up. We have just a few seats left. So make sure you go sign up for that one. There's still a payment plan available, I believe, for that. And we have one coming in Cornwall in Canada. And that one will be April 11th through the 13th. Let me just make sure. I don't know why. I can't remember that. Cornwall in Ontario, April 11th through the 13th. And registration is open to only 80 spots. So make sure you check those out on Prina's Facebook page. All of the information, registration. Uh, Lamore and Carrie and I are going to be teaching at that one. And we're going to have a blast. So make sure you check those out. I hope you guys enjoyed the project. I can't wait to see what you guys create with the techniques you learned tonight. And I will see you on the 15th. And while I have you, let me show you uh, the sample for the 15th class. This is the little mini journal we're going to be creating. Okay. I'm going to show you how to use, let me open this up, how to use kind of your scrap papers that you may have lying around. And those... Um, just a different way to use the covers. You know the um, canvas covers that we have that have the um, or, uh, resist um, cover? It's just a different way that you guys can create and use those. So this is the class I'll be doing on the 15th. Alrighty. So everybody have a good night, day, afternoon, and I will see you next time. Bye.